Hello everyone, Marty Jens here from Unixe.nl. Today I will start off a new series of videos and with these videos I will try to teach you the more advanced game maker techniques. Just think of the 3D bullet collision, 3D skeletal models, smart AI and more. In this particular video I will explain a basic 3D engine which I have made to support my uh, tutorials. You can get this engine at my website, just go to engines and a look for the engine 3d basic page as you can see I've made four different versions you can just download them and use them in any project for free uh, but it would be nice if you gave me some credit um, now we're going to take a look at the 3d engine itself alright as you can see I made a basic 3d world and I'm just going to walk you through the different techniques so first up is the camera movement while using the mouse you can look at any direction you want you can use the WASD keys to move the player around and as you can see there's actually a collision with the boxes. You can just walk through them. I also made a simple 3D collision so jumping on top of the boxes will work. Uh, in this little engine I also made a lighting system. It uses all three forms of lighting. So you have ambient light which is uh, shown at the back of this box. You have directional light, which is shown at the front, and you have these uh, point lights, which uh, light up the area. As you can see, this side is more bright than this side. And these light, light bulbs are actually imported models, so that's also uh, shown in the engine. Let's have a look at the engine itself. First off, we have the sprites, which uh, is divided by um, maps, icons and masks. The icons are just little image, images which make it easier to recognize different objects. The masks are for collisions. Um, next up is the background map which only consists of uh, textures. Um, just remember whenever you want to add a new texture, keep the width and height in a power of 2. Alright, next thing is the scripts. Uh, it only consists of a readme file. Um, you can find uh, some challenges here which are pretty important. When you are just getting started with 3D, just try out these challenges. And after doing the challenges you will understand the engine a lot better. Alright, so next up is uh, the map objects. Uh, it's divided in engine and assets. The engine objects uh, should only be created once in a room. And they are pretty important for the game and the assets are actually just there to fill up the room so we have multiple boxes and you can have multiple lights all right um, at the last we have the room which is uh, in here and let's uh, go ahead and take a look at the objects now first off we have object main this object is uh, responsible for doing some global settings and declaring global variables and loading uh, some models. It also does other important things like uh, exiting the game and toggling uh, full screen. It has the highest depth so it will be executed first. Uh, then we have object camera. This camera sets some uh, 3D settings and creates some uh, variables for itself. Uh, it also uh, needs to be drawn before other 3D objects, so that's why it has a high depth. Uh, next up is the object lighting. Uh, in the create event we have ambient light, which is uh, the default color for every 3D object. And uh, we have the directional light, which can be compared to the sun. In the draw event we have a pretty big script, as you can see. Uh, this script will take the 7 lights that are closest to the player and uh, turns them on and the rest of the lights will be turned off. Uh, I made the script because GameX Studio only supports up to 8 lights in total. So with the directional light combined this will make it uh, 8 lights. Um, then we have Object World which is just a 3D floor. Next up is uh, Object Player which is the biggest object. It will do most of the keyboard events and controls the camera. In the step event, uh, the first script 
will change the camera direction dependent on the mouse movement. The second script will adjust the player movement. And the third script will calculate the gravity of the player. Uh, in the end step, we will set the global camera values. So the object camera will show a diff different projection of the 3D world. And then we have the ob collision with object structure. This consists of uh, two parts. The first uh, part is for normal collisions. And the second part happens when the player is above an object's uh, structure. Alright, now we go to object structure, which is used in the player. Um, to illust illustrate this object, I made a little image. Every object in the room that should be able to collide with the player should have object structure as their parent. So when you do this, you only need one collision event in the player. So that's why I made an, a special object, which uh, saves a lot of code. Alright, now let's get to the assets. Here we have object box. It's just a normal box, but to enable collision for it, I made object structure the parent. And uh, I also added the value variable structure zmax. And this is the highest point of the box, and since the box is 16 points high, this value is uh, also 16. Then we have the point light object. In the create event, I will set the variables of the point light. So you actually can change a lot of things, like the range and even the color. And I add one to the global lights. So object lighting, which is here, will know that there has been a new light created. Then in the draw event, uh, I actually draw a 3D model. So this is the script for it the position, the texture and the model itself and this variable is created in the create event of object main which is here. So that's the explanation of the objects and with that we've reached the end of the explanation. I hope you have a general idea of what this engine does. Uh, if you have GameMaker 8.1 or 8.0 just go ahead and follow the next tutorial where I will teach you how to create your own 3D gun for your game. If you have GameX Studio, just hang on, because I will give you some more information about the different versions. If you want to change the current GameX Studio version, you have to go to this website. Here you can download all of the installers for GameX Studio, and just uh, select the version you want, and install it. Uh, you can easily open up all our projects, but when you want to open projects made with a newer GameMaker Studio version, you have to delete the configuration file. To do this, open up your project map, click on configs and select the default.config and delete it. When you open up um, the project, GameMaker should ask you to create a new config file. Just uh, hit OK and after that we go to the global game settings click window and enable force software processing. This will make your 3D game compatible with all the Windows machine. Now hit OK. Now that your project has been opened, there's one thing that I still want to show you. The loading and saving of models in GameX Studio is a lot different from the way they do it in GameX 8. So that's why I've created a page on my website. Just go to tutorials and click on this page. And here you can find all the information about loading and saving models in different game maker versions. So that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.